Okay, guys. Uh, in, in lab this week, we've nitrated fluorine. Fluorine is the tricyclic system here. Okay, it, it is a solid where benzene is a liquid. We nitrated it in these conditions. Yeah, Wednesday we'll lab will do that this afternoon. Next week, next week you will take your product, which is hopefully pure. You should never do any reaction without it, but you have a pure product. Going to reduce the nitro group to the amino group and make the two amino fluorine. Uh, but you have two different options. You can either use zinc, and there the protein source is ammonium chloride, or you can use tin metal. And when you use tin metal, ACL is the proton source. Uh, either case, you use ethanol and reflux. Uh, so you uh, have a choice of which one you want to use. Okay? I don't think it says anything like student number. Okay, it's your choice. There'll be other choices as we go along. Uh, this product uh, will need to be extracted, and there's a short column done, and you rotovap. Uh, okay, uh, this is one of the more lengthy procedures. Okay. Uh, once we get this made, then we'll kind of diverge uh, from there. Now the third week, uh, I think it's listed as make the two iodo, but I may have may want some of you to do something else because this also requires rotovap. Uh, since we only have a couple of rotovaps, it might be good for only half of you to do this and the other half to maybe do something like this. Uh, but next week, everybody's got to do this because this is the only thing you can do. Okay, Monday's lab did a great job in terms of time. There were people that left 30 minutes before the end of lab. Uh, by the time 5.15 rolled around, the majority of people were gone. The way over, there was only a couple left, a few left. On the other hand, yesterday, there was only a few gone by the time the lab ended. Uh, the lab yesterday on Tuesday, yesterday morning, uh, you guys need to work on uh, improving your efficiency. Okay, question. Can we come in at any point during the week to obtain yield and uh, no. mounting force? No. no, can't come in any time. Everything needs to be done during lab time. What happens if it's not pure? If it's not pure. pure. Okay. Does the lab manual give you any guidelines? How do I notice? It doesn't say you need to be purified. If it's not pure, you need to purify, uh, such as recrystallization, um, etc. Uh, now, it may be that we can get away with a faint impurity. We'll have to make a judge. Um, but. That's not ideal, but we do have constraints of time. Uh, basically, you can't just blindly just say, I made a product and then move ahead. Well, this is the real world. If your stuff is not good, moving ahead, you're just going to get worse and worse, and you're going to junk in, junk out. Uh, you want to have pure compounds. Uh, believe it or not, just because you recrystallize doesn't mean your product is pure. Okay. You have to assess that it's pure. Okay, there'll be many things to talk about. Uh, we'll see how the efficiency is today. Certainly, the, this first lab should be done in uh, um, the uh, lab period that's the time allotted. Any other questions about the uh, project lab? Okay, uh, let's look at the, uh, where we left off at, EAS reactions, we looked at, uh, what did we do? We halogenated, halogen, we nitrated, which is uh, essentially bonding the nitrogen to the ring in the form of a nitro group. Uh, we sulfonated, bonding the sulf sulfur to the ring. Um, nitro we can reduce. Um, now, we will get to Friedel-Crafts reactions. Friedel-Crafts reactions is where you bond a carbon to the ring, either an alkyl or an acyl group. I sent you that handout by email. At least have that on Friday. And then there was another one for next week. 
Uh, but at this point, we need to look at what's called substituent effects. For example, if we brominate benzene, what do you get? Bromobenzene. There's, there's no isomers possible. What if you brominate toluene? Yeah? What if you take toluene and brominate it? Where's the bromine going to go? It can either go next door ortho, meta, or para. Most likely a para. Okay? So now we have to consider the effect of this group. How does it influence? That's called. What's it called? Substituent. Substituent effect. What is the effect of the substituent? <coughs> And there's two things. Roman numeral one is activation, deactivation. For example, is tiling more reactive towards the AS or less reactive? That would be well, what is the effect of the substituent in terms of activation, deactivation. If it's less reactive, we say this is the deactivating substituent. So that's the first consideration. The other consideration, Roman numeral two, is the um, well, there's different Roman numerals, uh, but two compared to the first one that I was trying, is the directing effect. That is, where does this group direct the new bromine? Does it direct it to go there, there, or there? So, activation and directing. First thing we'll look at is the activation, deactivation of marine towards EAS. Now, if your existing group is a electron donating group, net, because some groups can do both. We have to determine what is the net effect. If the net effect is donating with an arrow donating electrons, okay, that is going to be more reactive than benzene. And most of these things should be very intuitive once we hear them. Now, if your group is an electron withdrawing group net, that's going to be less reactive than benzene. Why does this make sense? When this reacts in EAS, what type of charge is generated in the ring? Positive. Positive. The sigma complex is positively charged. So how do you stabilize a positive charge? Bringing electrons. Donating groups stabilize it. You stabilize it, you're going to make the intermediate easier to form. It's thus going to be faster than benzene. But what if we have an electron withdrawing group? What's that going to do to a positive charge? Destabilize. That ain't going to help it. So it's going to make it more difficult to form the intermediate. Thus, it's going to be less reactive than benzene. Okay? That's why, that's basically what I just described to you right here. Another way to describe what I just told you is right here. Here's benzene. Okay? Here's the sigma complex, positively charged. Resonance stabilized. They're all resonance stabilized, but it's positively charged. Okay? Consider over here. What if you put a donating group? Donating group stabilizes the positive. Now we're going to do resonance. Okay? And exactly where is the positive? Well, it's actually spread out through there. But in general, if you donate towards a positive, that's going to stabilize the positive. What does that do? It lowers the energy of the species compared to that. Lower energy usually means that there's a lower transition state leading to it. So this is lower than that. Maybe not much, a little lower. Since this is lower, it's going to be easier and thus faster for the donating group. On the other hand, we have a withdrawing group, we're going to raise the energy of this compared to if the withdrawing group was not there. This is higher, the transition state leading to it will be higher, typically. And so that's going to be a more difficult reaction. It has a higher transition state energy. So this should be very intuitive, again, once we hear it, and it's based on the principles we've been talking about since the beginning of organic one. Importantly, that would be these resonance structures. Okay, what are some different types of substituents? I've categor categorized the types into groups one through four, from number one through four. Your book may do it a little bit differently. 
different folks do it differently. Group one is what I call strong activators uh, slash donators. Of course, if it donates, it's going to be an activator. It's going to make it more reactive. It's a strong donor. What type of groups are these? This is going to be atoms with a lone pair other than halogen. So not halogen. What type of atom with a lone pair other than halogen may we see? Oxygen with a lone pair? Nitrogen with a lone pair? Any others? Sulfur with a lone pair? Does it say something can't be? What about phosphorus with a lone pair? Yes, it falls under this category. Etc. You see the etc. Okay. Why? Why are these strong activators? For example, here, here's an example. The atom bonded to the ring is an atom with a lone pair, but not halogen. So that's group one. Strong activator. Now, some explanation. These atoms are more electronegative than carbon. Thus, if we drew a dipole here, wouldn't we have that oxygen more electronegative? Yeah, but we also got something else. Inductively, it withdraws. Well, if it withdraws, it should be a deactivator. That's not what I'm describing here. Okay, it withdraws by induction. However, I put that in capital letters. That might be their donation by resonance is very strong, and is actually the predominant overriding effect. It draws by induction, but it donates by resonance. And we can draw, let's just do resonance. These electrons can move here, and these can move out. Going, these electrons here, these can move out. We can keep going, these can move here, these can move out. These are resonance structures illustrating the conjugation of the lone pair, the donation of the lone pair. You should be able to show these resonance structures. Uh, what's the hybridization of that oxygen there? Well, then you said SP3. Well, if it's SP3, then how the heck am I doing resonance? Conjugation would put it in SP2. <laughs> yeah, it's actually SP2. Because anytime a lone pair is next to a pure orbital, the lone pair is going to want to be in a pure orbital. Yeah. I mean, we can take time to draw the hybrid, but we did this in organic one. Okay. Pure orbital, pure orbital, pure orbital, pure orbital, pure orbital, pure orbital, pure orbital. One electron in each of those pure orbitals, there's your pi system. Lone pair here, p orbital, and now you have uh, all seven lined up. Lone pair here. If that p orbital is not lined up, we we can't do what we just did there. Um, and this p orbital being lined up, these electrons are being able to contribute to the pi system. And as these electrons contribute, we start getting electron more electron density down here. Okay, if you look at the hybrid, what does the hybrid look like? What type of bonding do we have between the oxygens? Single, double, double, double. What's, what's halfway between single and double? One and a half. Yeah, if you look at it, it's like that, all the way around. What's the charge on oxygen? It's actually a partial positive. 
Here's important. Which carbons of the ring have partial negative? That one, that one, and that one. There's how you compound. There, there's a true structure. And that's the actual closer depiction of the true structure of anisole. But again, that's cumbersome to draw. Nobody would ever draw it like that unless you were discussing resonance. We draw it like this, because of the four up here, which one's major? The one with the most bonds. Well, they all have the same number of bonds. So the one with the most bonds. Yeah, this is your, this is your, okay. It doesn't mean we shouldn't be aware of these, or they contribute. They contribute to the hybrid, okay. So, the presence of this pumps electrons into the ring. Now I'm showing this from the from the starting. I'm, okay, the starting. I'm not showing it from the cation stage, but we could also do the same thing in the cation stage. As we move forward, we'll do resonance of the cation. Interestingly, though, where is the electron density put into the ring? Which compared to this group, which carbons? Ortho and para. Ortho and para. Okay, that's about uh, half the story. There'll be more uh, to go with that. Um, so, the resonance is the greater effect. It can do both, but what's the net effect here? Withdrawing or donating? Donating. Donating is the net effect. But the withdrawing is the minor, the minor feature. Okay, but not halogen. Okay, group two. Group two are your weak activators, donators. And they are activators, but they're not as strong as group one. We're calling them weak. Two different types here, conjugated pi bonds or alkyl groups. Now, the alkyl groups are probably the most common, but these are also important. Conjugated pi bonds donate by weak resonance donation or weaker. Alkyl groups donate by inductive. And both of these are going to be weaker effects than lone pair donation. Resonance donation by a lone pair is typically a, a, a strong effect. Um, how can we show some donation here? Well, we can just show resonance structures. I mean, we can polarize this out. We could have showed plus here. I skipped that. If there's plus here, we can then show electrons here. We can get this resonance structure. Now, that is a primary cation. Of course, it's resonance delocalized. Uh, it's probably better to show the effect of, uh, of a cation. Not the starting material, but the cation. For example, if this reacts with bromine, okay, you know, if you're complex to the iron and whatnot, um, okay, this reacts with bromine, do we get this here? This is your sigma complex. Stabilized by resonance. It's always going to be stabilized by resonance by your two pi bonds. But look at here. It's also stabilized by resonance from the double bond. It's going to be a stabilizing effect. Okay? But, but stabilization by the pi bond is a more weaker effect than stabilization by a lone pair, which could have come from if this was like a methoxy. See, if it was previously on the previous page, if we had that coming off, we could show resonance from the lone pair. That'd be a stronger effect. So the presence of this group is going to further stabilize your cation and make it easier to form. All right, alkyl groups. Like a methyl, for example, in toluene. If we consider the starting material, we know the sp3 carbon donates by induction, right? 
Now, you're not going to show resin structures here, but, okay, like we did with anisole. This is donation, so it's donate. Does that withdraw any? What's its net effect? It does not withdraw. The only thing it does is induction. So it's a net donator. But induction is typically a weaker effect than resonance. Especially if you talk about resonance from a lone pair. So that's why this is considered a weak donator. Now we can do the same thing. We can react this with I+. Plus. We can get the cation here. How does the presence of the methyl stabilize the cation? Well, let's do additional resonance structures. We can pull these down. These are just your resin structures and your sigma complex. We can move these up. This is no different than on the first page. The only difference is the presence of the methyl. presence of the methyl stabilizes this cation. How? Where, where, where can you point to the stabilization? Couture? This one here? Stabilizing the cation. It's like it's tertiary. If that wasn't there, it looked like it was secondary. But with the methyl there, it's tertiary. So that's a classical stabilization effect that we see from the methyl. And we particularly see it here when the cation is sitting right there. Okay? And how's the methyl stabilizing the cation? By induction. Okay. Group three, these are going to be your weak deactivators. And of course, if it's a deactivator, we thus know that it must be a withdrawer. Because donators don't deactivate. Okay, so these go hand in hand. Group three, now this is where your halogens come in. Let's explain why halogens are here. First off, like group one, halogens both withdraw inductively and donate by resonance. So inductively withdrawing. They also donate by resonance. So this is just like the methoxy was on group one. The difference is when your halogens, this is not your major effect. With the halogens, this is your major effect. So if that's the major effect, what is the net effect? After you balance these off, you're left with what? This being the net effect. And halogens are considered weak deactivators because they are net withdrawers. Thus, which one reacts faster in an EAS reaction? Benzene or bromobenzene? Which reacts faster? Benzene. Benzene. Because bromobenzene, the bromine, is a deactivator. Because the net effect is withdrawing. And it's going to be more difficult to form a positive in the ring if you've got a chlorine withdrawing from the ring.
since oxygen is more electronegative, would it now be, I mean, compared to chlorine, would it now be no longer a donator? Would it be a star? Mm, no. I thought you were going to go the other way. Well, I could see it both ways. That's why I'm confused. Because, like, if you if you just look at it in terms of electronegativity, oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine. And then... Um, I, I don't like I don't like that. Where are you getting that from? I just looked up the numbers. Yeah, no, you, you said that we could take over. Um, is that what the number says? To me, chlorine is more electronegative. Well, let's look at the numbers. 3.16 versus 3.44. Yeah, let's look at the numbers. Um, now, oxygen is more electronegative than iodine. I'll give you that. Um, that's because there are other things going on. Um, iodine, uh, the bigger the halogen, the less it can do resonance as well because the P orbital gets so much bigger. Um, I'm giving you the Cliff Notes version, and usually, I know you guys don't probably agree, but usually we only do the Cliff Notes version. Okay? Um, and so it starts balancing versus, okay, well, fluorine can do resonance better. Yeah, but it's more electronegative. Uh, so, what, so it all becomes a balance, and what's the net effect? And the net effect for them all is withdrawing after you get into the gritty details. Um, and there are always questions to ask because, again, we're just, uh, we only go so deep. Okay, group four. Group four are your strong deactivators with drawers. What are these? Is it going to be, now typically we're looking at the atom bonded to the ring. It may be a group. It may be a huge big old group, but we're looking at the atom directly bonded to the ring. Okay, here we're looking at uh, those that are electron poor atoms with no lone pair. Because guess what? If it had a lone pair, it would be where? What group would it be in? It'd be group one, except for halogens, and that's group three. Anything else with a lone pair is going to, so no lone pair, right? You've already pretty set, pretty much said that if you think about it. So as they have no lone pair, they can't donate by residence. Now, I'm not really considering the pi bond donation, but that's going to be very minor here. Um, and certainly, if they, don't, they can't do lone pair donation if they don't have a lone pair. Typically, they only withdraw injunctively. And this is the only example where they only withdraw inductively. Thus, they are considered strong withdrawers deactivators. Because the net effect is this, and it tends out to be typically strong. What are examples? Your nitro group is an example of this. Okay? So if you had nitrobenzene, of course, this, this means it's bonded to the ring. Okay? But if you look at it, which I have it drawn out, bonded to the ring, what type of atom is bonded to the ring? Does the nitrogen have a lone pair? No, you've got to know your little structure of your nitro. Is it electron poor? Possibly charged. Electron poor. So it fits the description of what we said. What about some other groups? What about like a sulfone? Maybe it's a sulfonic acid. Does a sulfur have a lone pair? No. Is it electron poor? Yes, because it's got these dipoles. And so that sulfur is electron poor. Now, it doesn't have a positive charge in that, in that structure, but it's electron poor. This one's very important. Your carbonyls. Carbon doesn't have a lone pair. Is it electron poor? Yeah, it's got a partial positive charge due to the dipole. So it doesn't have to have a formal positive, it could just have a partial positive. Your nitrile group, or the cyano group, does the carbon have a lone pair? No. Is it electron poor? Yeah. Because of the dipole. But these are examples that fall under my group four. Again, I don't think I've seen any other book that does four groups that I just gave you. Some books do like three groups, 
Okay, I gave you a little bit more detail. Um, so don't think that this is a universal designation. That's just me. Uh, there could be others here. But if you saw another one, what would you look for? Well, does it have a lone pair? Does it seem to be electron poor? Okay, you look for trends. So you can then predict if you see a, a sort of a new group or an odd group. Okay, uh, we, pr we probably went over that right there. Let's go down here, review. What if you had these? And you rank them in terms of reactivity. Well, there you go, they're ranked in terms of reactivity. The most reactive of the four on the top would be this guy, right? What type of group is this guy? It's group one, strong activator. We've got that lone pair that's going to donate to stabilize a cation. And again, we could, we could discuss it two different ways. We can discuss the neutral starting material that's pumping electron density into here. Or we can discuss the cation intermediate and we could talk about the stabilizing the cation by resonance. What type of group is this? Group two. It donates by induction, which is not as strong as donating by lone pair. Okay. Where would benzene fall? <coughs> this is benzene. So bromobenzene with group three is less reactive than benzene. And then that's less reactive than this. That's a group four. What type of group is this here? Functional group. Ester, right? Ester? Okay. What type of group is this down here? Bond to the ring. It's also an ester. Okay. So are esters withdrawing groups or donating groups? It depends on the position of the carbon. Yes, it depends on how it's attached to the ring because, yes, both of this circle things are esters. Down here, what atom is attached to the ring? <coughs> atom of the lone pair. Up here, we don't have an atom with a lone pair. So, what type of group is this really? It's kind of a group one, although it does have some. Can this donate all into the ring, or is it, or is it donating this way some? It's sort of donating both ways. But what I'm pointing out is you can't just say an ester is a withdrawing group. It depends on how it's bonded. And many functional groups may depend on how it's bonded. So don't fall into these overly generalistic traps. So would you, would you call that a group two then? Group one ish. Uh, that could be up for debate. But let me ask you this. Which one would you expect to be more reactive towards an EAS reaction, top or bottom? Bottom. Bottom, yes. Because that lone pair is going to be able to come in and do some residence, where that has no donation at all. OK? So that's more of the question and answer. Now, this may appear on uh, the next page or so where we classify it as maybe. Okay. Um, okay, uh, somebody asked about this guy. What if it was the anion here? Where would that fall? Yeah, it's group one, but how about compared to that? Which would be more reactive towards the AES, top or bottom? Bottom. This guy. Because this is going to want to donate even more into the ring. We're talking about this donating, that's going to donate more. This is even more reactive than that. This is very active towards an EAS. So it's essentially an RE anion. And once you start doing resonance structures, you're going to put an anion over here, and then it's going to be able to react with the electrophile very easily. So there's many different scenarios where you might be asked to assess something as opposed to just regurgitating what we showed here. Um, with the group one, uh, is it like oxygen, like relative between the oxygen and sulfur? Like based on size, does that affect the It does. I didn't get into it. Which one can donate better, oxygen or sulfur? Oxygen. Sulfur. Sulfur. 
We talked about that a little bit with furan versus diphene. Which donates better, oxygen or sulfur? Well, see, there's actually conflicts. The oxygen pure orbital is more appropriate size, the carbon pure orbital, but oxygen doesn't like to donate, comes into electron greedy. So it's kind of conflicting. Um, okay, let's look down here. Let me just give you some examples here. Nitration, rate of nitration, compared to benzene. Toluene nitrates 25 times faster. Okay, now that's approximate. 25 times faster. That makes sense. We got a, what type of group do we have? An activator. Okay. Anisol, 10,000 times faster. Why? Because oh, that's a group one. It's a stronger activator, stronger donator. On the other hand, nitrobenzene, if you try to put a second nitro group on, if you try to nitrate nitrobenzene, it's 100,000 times slower than benzene. It's harder to put that second one on because the, nit the nitro group is a strong deactivated. Okay? How about additive effects? <coughs> what if we have two groups? You can essentially just sort of add these up qualitatively. Which of the four is most reactive towards an EAS? <coughs> well, let's do this. What do we have here? Uh, a weak, weak deactivator. What do we have here? Strong deactivator. Okay, of these two, which is more reactive? The weak deactivator. So let's get rid of that one. Now, it's not as reactive as benzene, but it's more reactive than that. Okay, how about over here? What do we have? A weak activator? Strong deactivator. Strong deactivator, and this is a what? Weak deactivator with a strong activator. Both of these have weak, de weak deactivators, but this one also has a... So which one's more reactive? This one, because these cancel, you're left with a strong activating effect. Okay, of these two, which, what do we have? The second one. If you look at it, this one's better because the activator is stronger and the deactivator is not as strong. There you go. We sort of qualitatively assessed it. Make sense? So you can do that. You can just sort of add, add the effects up, and hopefully it will be obvious in, in the question. Hopefully that you see that one is obvious. So up to four, this one should be predicted to be the most reactive towards an EAS reaction. Which would be the least reactive? One on the far end, because at least this one has an activator to, to counteract this effect, where that has nothing to counteract. So is that why then? TNT is, has so much energy and so explosive because it's so hard to get that to happen to begin with that it's got No, to you're, t you're talking about two different things. It's hard to make. Um, actually, why is TNT more common? Why not just try nitrobenzene? <coughs> you try to put three nitro groups on benzene, it's quite difficult. If you try to put three nitro groups on tiling, it's easier. Why? Because you've got a, an activator that helps get those three on there. The reason it's explosive has to do with bond energies and the, the, the nitrogen oxygen bonds are not that stable. Um, when you have a lot of heteroatoms bonded to each other, that's not good. Um, actually, trinitrobenzene is more explosive than trinitrotoluene. Because the lower your carbon content, the more explosive typically. So if you take off the methyl, You've lowered your carbon content. But try not your benzene is harder to make. So I think that's why TNT became sort of the, the, the common one. Um, okay, so there we go. Now, of course, if you start getting the three and four groups on there, it can become maybe overly complex and you might not be able to predict it. But with two groups, it should be predictable. Question? Would the compound on the left be uh, more reactive than uh, that may be difficult. 
I'd have to look at it closer. We need to move on, but it, that could be difficult. But guess what? That wasn't the question. <laughs> so, it's okay to ask it, but there's some questions where you can't ask because it might not be possible to really get a firm answer on. Okay, uh, here is a table from a textbook, and you'll see um, they don't do group one through four. Uh, they give just all activating, then they, they group them according to just terms, strongly, moderate, and weak. I didn't even do that. In terms of me, both of these are group one, and then I call these group two. Basically, you look at it, make sure everything looks good, and see how they're characterizing them. See if there's any questions. Uh, we'll talk about this thing over here next. That's the directing effect. Uh, look down here, though. Strongly deactivated. If this was an NH2, is that a strong activator, deactivator? What is this? Strong it's a group one strong activator. Lone pair, not a halogen. Strongly deactivating. Why are they putting these guys all down here? Because if you protonate it and make it positive, what if it exists like this? Does an hydrogen have a lone pair now? No. Is it electron poor? So what group does it look like now? Four. It looks, if you protonate it, it becomes group four. So in the presence of acid, that's why I showed you these, you convert them to what now, now group four. So conditions may matter. Okay, directing effects. Let's get into this. So if we, we know anisole is going to be more reactive than benzene, that's, that's uh, activation effects. But what about this? What if we try to do an EAS such as nitration? Where's the nitro going to go? It turns out that some, somebody reported that you get 45% of the ortho product, 55% of the para product, and less than 1% of the meta product. So these two predominate. You get a mixture. Not one, but okay. The methoxy is known as an ortho para director. Ortho para. That's what you get. Looks like a mixture, and it is. And we say you typically do not get much of all of meta. Okay. This could even, we may see 5%, but that's always going to be quite minor, and we're going to say that we just don't get that. It's going to be so minor that it's, it's, it's not considered. So these are your two major products. Ortho pair director. Okay, how can we predict this? How do we know that that would be an ortho? We can go back and look at resonance structures, and we eventually will. Well, let's stay with some predictions. Any atom that can donate somehow will be an ortho pair director. So which groups can donate somehow? Groups one through three can. Groups one through three are ortho pair directors. Okay. Group 3 is or can donate, right? Now, that's not its net effect, because group 3 is mainly halogen. The net effect of halogen is withdrawing. But can it, can it donate by resonance? Yeah. It's a minor effect. This doesn't say it has to be the major effect. It says anyhow. And a halogen can donate by resonance. It's just not its major effect. Group 1 through 3 are orthopair directors. By default, we're going to see the group four is a meta director. Shown down here, if you nitrate nitrobenzene, you predominantly get meta. And these are considered minor and negligible, although that is 7%. 
Group four is going to be called a meta directive. And that is your predominant outcome for the new group. Uh, for the group one, two, and three, shouldn't the parrot be much higher in how much you get because of Sterix? Shouldn't it be like around seven okay, or eight? Okay, let's I guess? talk about that. He's saying, sh why shouldn't the terra be higher when you have the product there? Um, because yes, typically adding the group next door can sometimes be sterically hindered, especially if this group gets big. I mean, what if coming off this oxygen was like a T butyl? You could really get some sterics uh, for, the, for the electrophile approaching right here. Yes, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But here's a counter argument to that. You've got twice the carbons of ortho. Because it can approach here or here, and you get the same product. So that kind of counterbalances it. But we will, we will mention that. Para is often preferred, particularly when you do Friedel-Crafts chemistry. Para. Um, but I can show you some reactions where actually ortho is a predominant product. For us, though, we say you're going to get a mixture. You're going to get both. Okay. Now, for example, if you brominate this guy, which does not have a common name, it's the ester of benzoic acid, methyl ester of benzoic acid. What type of group is this? Group four. So it's going to be a meta director, and this would be your product that you predict as to be the major product. Just meta. Now, why? Why do you get these outcomes? Oh, there's one below. If you iodinate bromobenzene, what type of director is bromine? It's group three, so it's going to be ortho para. You actually have two major products that you predict. ortho and the para. Now you may be thinking, well, which is favored? Well, that's what we're saying. Neither is favored. Both are, both are favored as major products. Very often when you do such a reaction, you have to purify. But there may be some cases where you can make one more favored over the other, but that tends to be beyond the scope of what we're doing here. Okay. Now, why is this the case? Why do these direct like that? It's all based on resonance structures. <coughs> Here's toluene doing three different reactions. If the, if the electrophile is added ortho matter or para, do the reaction, you get the original sigma complex, but then you need to be able to show the resonance structures. And if you look at the resonance structures, we see that this is a particularly good one. We showed this earlier, right? <coughs> Here the methyl is donating to stabilize the positive. Here the methyl is donating to stabilize the positive. That's a particularly good thing for those reactions. Do you get this if it attacks meta? If it attacks meta, the positive never falls on the carbon with the methyl. So you don't get the stabilization from the methyl. You only get the stabilization from the ortho and para attacks. That's why those two products are your more predominant products. Okay, you need to look through this. We're about out of time, but the same thing is shown over here. Uh, this is where you have resonance from the amine. Actually, have resonance, not just induction, but you only get that ortho and para. On the other hand, if we look at the nitro, Ortho and para give something that's bad. <clears throat> These are bad. You need to look at that. Why is it bad? The plus is right next to the plus. 
bad. So in this case, the ortho and the pair is actually bad, so what happens instead? Meta. Meta. Not, not that it's so good, not that it's so good, but because the others are bad in this case. Please look at those. We'll, we'll start there. We'll sum those up next time. Okay. Sulfur lab sheets are going to be due Friday because there was a question sort of related to the day. All right. I didn't realize that either. Sulfur lab sheets. Both, every lab. <coughs> Today's lab as well. Same. All, everybody will turn in the sulfur lab sheet on Friday here in class. Okay, see some of you in lab this afternoon. Upstairs, upstairs.